Well, Hezbollah is now warning Israelis to prepare to wail and weep. The terror group is unleashing massive rocket attacks on northern Israel, and it's threatening a dramatic increase in the days ahead. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is blaming Hamas for shutting down the ceasefire proposal. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl has more. As Israelis mark the biblical holiday of Shavuot, Iranian-backed Hezbollah launched more than 200 rockets at northern Israel, the most ever in a single day. Earlier, the Israeli Air Force struck a major Hezbollah command center in southern Lebanon, killing one of its most senior leaders who had carried out attacks against Israeli civilians for years. In response, a Hezbollah official pledged a dramatic increase in the strength, intensity and number of attacks, threatening if the Israelis are crying about what happens to them in the north, they should prepare to wail and weep soon. Northern Israel has endured near daily attacks since Hamas launched the deadly October 7th attack on Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with the heads of Israel's military, security and emergency services late Wednesday over the situation in northern Israel. The ramp up in the north comes as a push for a ceasefire in Gaza has stalled out after Hamas added new demands that Israel can't accept. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is blaming the terror group for sinking the deal. A deal that the entire world is behind, a deal Israel has accepted, and Hamas could have answered with a single word, yes. Instead, Hamas waited nearly two weeks and then proposed more changes, a number of which go beyond positions that had previously taken and accepted. Hamas apparently now wants the war to end permanently in the first phase of the ceasefire before releasing the hostages. It also doesn't guarantee it will release all the hostages. Blinken continues to push for an agreement and a day after plan to govern Gaza that does not include Hamas. Ultimately, it may not be the path that Hamas wants to pursue, but Hamas cannot and will not be allowed to decide the future. For this region and its people. Meanwhile, the recently rescued hostages are revealing more about their ordeal. The three men say they were held in a dark room for six months, beaten by their guards, and covered with blankets in very hot weather. Still, Andrei Kozov's father says his son seems optimistic about the future. He said there were some things that he would never tell us about what happened to him, but he talks about the things he talks about with a lot of humor. As temperatures soar in Israel and Gaza, there are still 120 hostages in Hamas captivity, about 80 believed to be alive. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. To anyone th who thinks that you can have peace with Hamas, please take what they're doing to heart and realize they have no intention of ever having peace with Israel. It's in their very charter. They demand the destruction of Israel. They have called for the killing of every single Jew in Israel, and they're not going to back off of those claims. They vowed to repeat October 7 again and again and again. It's time for us to stand with Israel and say, we back you fully on this. We do not believe their propaganda. We do not uh, in any way give them aid and comfort that somehow or other this is working on the international stage. It's time for the civilized world to say to radical Islam, no, you don't get to do this anymore. My anticipation, I hate to call it a prediction, but it, it, it's sort of been there for months now, that at some point in time, Israel is going to have to go into southern Lebanon. That was a no-fire zone set up by the U.N. The U.N. was supposed to police that from the, quote, no-fire zone, close quote. All of those missiles are being launched into Israel. I don't think they have any choice but to go in there and say, you can't be firing on our civilians from territory that's supposed to be no weapons, no fire. Uh, let's stand with them through this. It's now turned into a very long war, and unfortunately, it's going to be even longer. 
But if we stand with them, if we show radical Islamists that no, you can't do this, not on our watch, we vowed never again, and we really mean it, can we defeat that ideology, stop these senseless attacks, and say, no, let's try to have a peace solution. But in that peace solution, if you're radical, you don't get a seat at the table.